1960, there were 31 occupational therapy programs throughout the United States. However, most of these programs didn't reach full capacity. According to the American Medical Association, full capacity was 835. However, only 726 spots were filled. It was believed that this was due to a lack of understanding of what occupational therapy was, as well as poor recruiting techniques. The want to improve both of these problems led to the curriculum study. Although the curriculum study formally began in 1958, it was in the 1960s when the majority of the work was done. This project was divided into two sections. The first section was a self-study to better understand the entire profession of occupational therapy, focusing on the graduate's understanding of the profession and providing the knowledge and skills for optimal success in this field. The second part of the study focused on five key points in reference to physical and psychosocial dysfunction. These areas were patient evaluation, treatment planning, treatment methods and activities, supervision, and administration. The curriculum study ended in 1963. In 1949, AOTA realized that there was a need for assistant level practitioners in the occupational therapy profession. However, it was 1960 when the first two certified occupational therapy assistant classes were established. This was a 12-week training program in Massachusetts and New York. At this time, CODAs were not considered members of AOTA and could only practice in psychiatric settings. Now there are over 160 college degree or professional certification programs throughout the country. These programs take two years to complete. CODAs are now allowed to assume leadership and there is a continuous growing awareness in regards to their vital contribution to the occupational therapy profession. 1965 was a pivotal year for OT when occupational therapy was specifically classified as home health care and extended services in the public law 89 to 97. This included occupational therapy in the Medicare programs within the Social Security Amendment Act. Inclusion in Medicare provided AOTA with many opportunities for growth, eventually leading to greater involvement in the healthcare system. Also in 1965, the Student Occupational Therapy Association met at the annual AOTA conference to improve the communication between OT students from different schools, as well as to increase student involvement in AOTA. This involvement helped SONA members develop connections with AOTA members, as well as to improve their knowledge of the organization and the occupational therapy profession. AOTA sanctioned the American Occupational Therapy Foundation, or AOTF, in 1965 to increase public knowledge and understanding of the purpose of occupational therapy. AOTF's purpose is to advance in science through supporting research and funding studies in order to improve both the practice and the overall health. AOTF funded $3 million in grants during just the first 20 years of research support and continues to support research in the occupational therapy field today. 1967 celebrated the 50th year of AOTA's existence as an official organization. The anniversary was commemorated by a plaque being placed at the Constellation House in New York. Originally purchased by George Barton to treat individuals with disabling conditions, the Constellation House at the time was owned by Mr. and Mrs. Wright. This letter was written to Mr. Wright from Florence Cromwell, AOTA's president in 1976, to outline certain details of the 50th anniversary plans. 1968 brought the first official definition of occupational therapy to the association influenced by Ruth Brunier, the AOTA president from 1964 to 1967. Ruth had reviewed the status of occupational therapy and expanded the traditional occupational therapy role, focus, objectives of intervention, relationship to the patient, and relationship to medicine to incorporate the new changes that had transpired over time. The roles of occupational therapy had opened up to include evaluation, consultation and planning, and the objectives of intervention move from correcting illness or disability to prevention of disease, disability, and deficits, as well as the improvement of patients' overall health. The relationship between an OT and a patient had broadened to include not just hospitals, but also clinics, group therapy, and home care. This definition was the first adopted general statement of the association. The social context of the 1960s was women's empowerment and the continuing civil rights movement. This decade's primary concern was the structure and focus of occupational therapy, as well as the use of Medicare and Medicaid. Some important people during this decade were Jean Ayers, Gail Fidler, and Mary P. Riley, who were all theorists. Mary Riley delivered the Eleanor Clark Slagle Lecture in 1961. This lecture is the most cited in occupational therapy literature. 
The AOTA presidents during this time were Wilma West from 1961 to 1964, Ruth Brunyate from 1964 to 1967, and Florence Cromwell from 1967 to 1970. The three executive directors were Marjorie Fish, Francis Helmig, and Harriet Teibel.